What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Justin Falls. We back at it again with another video, and today we're looking at Atomic Heart review from IGN. So the game is about to be out. Um, I think it comes out tomorrow. I tried to. I have it downloaded it on my Xbox right as we speak. So I should have some footage out soon. I gotta upload some other footage that I've been recording lately. But we are gonna get to it. So um, without further ado, let's get to this video. I'm really interested to see what they gotta say. There's a lot to be said about unapologetically single-player games like Atomic Heart. Its entire focus is on creating an intricate world for us to explore and discover for ourselves. Right. A killer chicken. Now I've seen it all. An eye-catching blend of super-powered shooting and first-person puzzling, this is a lengthy, tough and terrific-looking shooter that has us bathing in the blood and gears of elaborately designed enemies, both biological and robotic, and dispatching them with an impressive set of combat options. How about this? Mm. Granted, it's not as clever as it thinks it is when dealing with Me. melee combat Me. or its typical fetch quests, and the story doesn't quite stick its landing, but the Aww. journey from point A to point B is a sight to behold. Okay. Isn't there supposed to be a radio in here? So the execution is there is just, you know. Atomic Heart is an alternate history shooter cut from the same cloth as Bioshock and Machine Games' Wolfenstein series. It's a kind of retro-futuristic romp back to an imagined past perverted by ridiculously advanced technology. Right. A world where science has made the supernatural a reality and robots are now running rife. <laughs> These are far from the only shooters Atomic Heart is unafraid to crib from, either. Half-Life and the puzzle-solving of Portal are also clear inspirations. And there's yeah. been an attempt- I feel like at this point, if you're not, if you're making a modern game, or you're, if your intent is to make a modern game and you're not biting off the greats, you're doing it wrong. Like you even see he had that jump dash, which is would be common in Doom games. You know, a lot of games are doing that now where you could have, you could have the, that uh first person jump dash i'm not saying the jump dash is something that doom invented but like doom as you know is from an earlier time you know so like you you got you like what i'm saying is you basically you have to copy the greats if you want to be great like you can't I, I, it was one this one um was one time i was listening to black hokage's podcast hokage thoughts and he said you got to study the greats like you can't be a doctor and not study doctors. It's not study not study and replicate what doctors do. And that, that makes sense to me. So like you gotta copy the greats, basically. Tempted sprinkling of Arcane's successful brand of first person stealth too. However, it'd be unfair to call Atomic Heart wholly derivative despite such recognizable building blocks. Certainly, the idea of a peaceful utopia torn to pieces thanks to technology turning on its ambitious masters no, no. is nothing new. Yeah. But developer Mundfish has assembled its vision in a confident and compelling way, and the art team here well oh, and truly understood oh, the assignment. Oh, hands. Will, like Will Smith, I robot. The most remarkable element here is the superb visual design, especially the look of these well-crafted enemies. Let me go, you son of a bitch! Oh. Its range of robots is particularly strong, from its sleek and sinister mustachioed terminators that charge at us without ever reverting their gaze. Oh, he tried to, to drop it. Pot belly parking meters with mouth tubes that make them look like they're sucking at the drawstring on an invisible jacket. Its featureless <laughs> ballerina bots and spindly legged battle balls are equally yo, memorable. Let me, uh, the latter of which. Yo, y'all are mad horny. Like, I posted a. Uh, a um. <laughs> I posted a, a, a screenshot. Well, a thumbnail. I posted a video of a thumbnail of a reaction I did to her earlier on um, a time heart video. And then one of y'all post, it's just a robot, it's just a robot, it's just a robot. Y'all mad horny, yo. Ballerina bots so and funny. spindly legged battle balls are equally memorable. The latter of which are probably best described as scaled down Eastern Bloc knockoffs of those things that couldn't kill Mr. Incredible. <laughs> it does There's though. Even one it does. It does. Those do like, I was thinking like, yo, where have I seen that thing before? That those big machines that was in the Incredibles. Wow, I was I've been thinking about that for the past few videos I was doing for uh 
for Atomic Heart. Wow. Looks like Baymax cosplaying as a tank. Right. Atomic Heart's outstanding aesthetic also extends to its Mad large Disney range designs. of partially ruined labs, facilities, and transportation hubs, each filled with long, snaking globules of the liquid polymer that powers the advancements of this fantastical 1950s. Mm. That said, there is a distinct feeling of look don't touch in these places. There's definitely a lack of destructibility. Balloons immune to axe swings are probably the worst offenders. <laughs> But the level of detail overall is strikingly good. There are some especially tiny touches in Atomic Heart that smack of a great deal of consideration, like the way there are different reload animations for unspent magazines compared to empty ones, the latter of which are flicked away while the former are grasped by the same hand sliding a fresh one in. Watching them play out is a pleasure, which is why it was a bit annoying that my HUD was sometimes cluttered with pickup notifications and health bars for mini bosses no longer in the area that froze on screen until I reloaded from a recent save. But why is it stuck oh, there like that? Darn. And I've experienced some uneven quality when it comes to graphical glitches as I've played on Xbox oh, Series I X. That trap. I the worst that trap. is a terrible strobing effect on some fast moving robots running circuits around a large room, and the frame rate tanks if you ride them. But fortunately, it seems mostly mm. isolated to certain bot types. I've had no such problems with similarly nimble and often much larger bosses. Atomic Heart is naturally all tinted with the Soviet-era iconography you'd probably expect from a land tucked deep behind the Iron Curtain in the mid-1950s. And admittedly, the lens through which you may view all this Soviet symbolism is a little different today in 2023 than it was upon its announcement and first revealed back in 2018. Very true. Everyone here seems so happy and I content. I mean, but of course. my thing is, it's like, it's a video game depicting a time in history, but it's alternated. It's, 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 it's um, not alternated. It's uh, altered. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, So back then, there was a lot of Soviet symbolism. So why would you knowingly buy or play a game that that you know it has symbolism that disturbs you that doesn't mean that the game shouldn't be made and you should be you know trying to tell people not to play it just don't fucking play it if it has something you like in it you don't like in it then don't play it like it's really simple as that having grown up you're not gonna like everything in this world and that's okay it's a lot of shit i don't like in this world do i indulge in it do i spend my time talking about it no not unless it, it directly affects me or like even if it indirectly affects me or affect people I love, you know, like, come on now, you gotta do better. Now if it's if it's if it affects you or indirectly affects you, whatever, talk about it all you want. But end of the day, you have to realize that there's bigger fish to fry and there's bigger battles out there that you could be fighting and spending your energy on than a fucking video game. Like, come on guys. Let's be real. Graphically isolated and politically irrelevant in the Southern Hemisphere, largely detached from Cold War concerns and raised on Bond movies, Stripes and Rocky IV. I must break you. My read on such an overtly Russian backdrop is guaranteed to be markedly different to someone with roots in Eastern Europe. For its part, however, the background does largely fade away as Atomic Heart peels back the layers of its false utopia. At this stage, facility 3826 in the countryside of rural Russia isn't much different to the likes of Bioshock's Rapture itself. Yeah. That is, a place more or less cut off from the outside world where something has gone deeply, deeply wrong. Ugh, this tunnel's messed up. Exploring exactly what's gone wrong is the job of our character, Special Forces veteran Major Sergei Necheyev. Welcome, Comrade Major! or P3, as he's dubbed throughout. Mm. The foul mouth and amnestic P3 is admittedly a bit of a relic of games gone by, and his default English language voiceover doesn't exactly do him a lot of favors. He comes off as the cookie-cutter American lead of every second shooter ever made. No time for dirt nap, Stuck. Get your ass up and head to cover. However, it's the script that really does him a greater disservice. While I'll happily admit swearing is virtually my second language, <laughs> P3 spews it with the gusto of a teenage boy testing every curse word he's recently learned twice a sentence. I need some parts to upgrade my weapon. I won't get far with this pile of sh**. It's a little exhausting, huh. and the presence of many modern turns of phrase don't exactly help. See, but I don't know. I play a lot of, like, wacky, wacky, like, um... A lot of wacky kind of games like where that don't really bother me 
like if anything is more hilarious that is so that the act that the script or the voice acting would be so bad that to me that just adds a layer of comedy to it like i don't take video games too seriously anyway like <laughs> that if anything that would that would that would make me that would make me laugh help keep the overall experience seated in the 1950s you dickhead of course, perhaps I'm being a little hypocritical in demanding consistency there, because the regularly ruthless soundtrack packed with headbangers courtesy of Doom and Wolfenstein composer Mick Gordon isn't exactly a sonic journey back to the days of doo-wop either. Right. And yet the music is pitch perfect as far as I'm concerned. At any rate, there is a Russian language English subtitle option for purists, but I would have simply preferred an English script that was more tempered for the setting and era. Watch your language, Major. There are well over 20 odd hours of play here in the main story thread alone, okay. with many more available in the decent, side objectives. Decently. Some of which border For on crucial board. if you actually want the best weapons. Some of that is padding, but it's a good length overall, and nicely inside that not too short, not too long Goldilocks zone for a great solo shooter. There are also two endings you can get based on just one choice you make in the finale, although after seeing both, I found the first anticlimactic and don't think the second was worth the reload. First, you'll need a substantial glove upgrade. Well, you Report to the lab. lab. However, while P3 is disappointingly threadbare as a character, he's nonetheless very capable and entertaining to play as, largely thanks to his partner Charles, who is a talking glove. Hey, glove. My name is Charles, comrade Major. Charles. Whatever. Sir. Okay, that's a bit reductive. Rather, Charles is basically an intelligent system embedded in P3, who is capable of granting him seemingly supernatural abilities, manifested by a set of small squid-like tentacles that extend from a glove on P3's left hand. This not only includes activating an X-ray style view. Tell me that didn't remind you of Bioshock, where you literally have to inject the the atom into your arm. Wow of your surroundings and tossing certain small objects a la Half-Life 2's iconic gravity gun, but also the ability to fire bolts of electricity or ice, levitate enemies into the air to shoot or slam into the ground, or even summon a temporary shield. Akin to Bioshock's plasmids, these abilities add an important layer of more interesting combat on top of Atomic Heart's otherwise fairly mm. typical blasting and slightly clumsy melee combat. There's a great sense of weight when beaming a bot in a brain pan with an axe, and the gouges that appear across their bodies in real time is a great touch. But I found the weapon swinging too slow and frustrating when swarmed by too many enemies simultaneously. The juggling act of defeating dense swarms of robots, as well as the blender-sized hovering repair bots that continually swoop in to magically resurrect them, gets a bit wearisome at times, especially above ground. That's Atomic okay. Heart's linear underground sequences are linked by a decent-sized slab of open world, where we're free to explore and fight wherever we wish. And this zone is initially a nice antidote to the more corralled corridor segments that progress the story or reward us with useful upgrades. However, with their long line of sight and overwhelming numbers, I often found myself running or driving away from fights rather than diving in and trying to get the upper hand via stealth before attacking. So basically, get good. Get good. That was a big ass cow. Robot Hordes yeah. become a little less intimidating as P3 and his arsenal grow stronger throughout the story, but that's a process that takes some time. Unlocking and upgrading these abilities requires a steady supply of resources, which the levels and defeated enemies are generally chock full of, even if collecting them can become a bit of a chore. Atomic Heart is smart to keep this process fast by allowing us to extend out a hand and suck up reams of resources like an industrial shop vac, but it still becomes a little tedious having to ransack the same sets of desks and cabinets arranged slightly differently in a hundred or so different rooms. Tedious I mean, 2 is Atomic Heart's like overly one. ambitious attempt to weasel its way out of accountability for leaning on some extremely hackneyed fetch quests. Having the main character cynically gripe and complain about collecting four canisters for a bafflingly unintuitive door locking mechanism that would never get past any sensible architectural committee isn't a free pass to proceed with it. So every other day you gotta run around collecting four different canisters? What a pain in the ass. The main character being annoyed for the same reason I am isn't cute. It's a tone-deaf non-apology for weak game design. Who the hell came up with all this shit? 
It's a shame that some better context wasn't baked around these occasional fetch quests because Atomic Heart's underground chambers feel like a ripe opportunity and are largely great otherwise. Eerie, deadly and mostly devoid of life. Unless you count the mutant freaks with skulls shattered into fanged floral arrangements hey, or no. the dead bodies that communicate via the confused ramblings of their fading brain implants. What are you talking about? It does rely too heavily on repeating the same handful of doorlock minigames that serve no real purpose other than to arbitrarily slow your progression from room to room. Ugh, supply room's locked. But I do like the bespoke platforming puzzle chambers and one-off brain teasers especially the clever visual puzzle you'll encounter late during your trip to an ornate theatre full of robotic performers. A Our brief guided tour is coming to an end. Atomic Heart is a deeply ambitious, highly imaginative and consistently impressive Adam Punk inspired attempt at picking up where the likes of Bioshock left off, something it's done with a lot of success. It certainly makes missteps, chiefly with an irritating leading man and a self-indulgent habit of using the same tired tropes it tries to make fun of. I'm a magnet for annoying bullshit. But this stern, superpowered, and stringently solo shooter has worked its way under my skin despite these flaws. Atomic Heart didn't always blow me away, okay. but it definitely has the ticker to punch well above its weight. For more recent verdicts, check out our reviews for Metroid Prime Remastered and Like a they Dragon that a Ishin. Ten. For they else, a ten. stick with IGN. I looked at this, I didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, um, I didn't do a video on it, but they gave this a 10. They gave this, we did a video on this, I think they gave this a, a, um, a 7 or 8. But yeah, that was um, about what I expected. Um, when you have games like this in a in an open world and it's very ambitious and it's very um it's very detailed like i said in the um in the last hogwarts video i did some things are going to get left out and as a gamer at this point i've come to i guess accept that because the only way things will change is if we speak with our dollar but enough of us aren't speaking with our dollar to make a change so i've almost come to accept it that these games are not gonna come fully suited and booted at least not at first like you got to give it a while like the state like if you look at a game like cyberpunk 277 disasters launch the mod community fixed it first and then cyberpunk is cyber um cd project Red fixed it itself it's now a phenomenal game you know so um even with that prospect, like, I don't really take games that, that, are, that aren't fully finished too seriously because I know that there's going to be enough of the community complaining to where either the mod community is going to fix it or the developer is going to fix it. So um, the developer is going to be forced to fix it. You can't let the mod community show you up. So, I mean, I don't really I don't really get too high or too low in games that don't launch fully, uh, fully suited and booted, fully, you know, equipped as long as it's playable like if it's unplayable then it's like ah that's just unacceptable well to ship a game not finished is unacceptable too but it's just like i could look past the some of the complaints that he had with this game as opposed to some of the complaints with cyberpunk 2077 because those were kind of those were inexcusable and i hyped the shit out that game like if you look at my videos from like 2020 i was hyping that game od and i was so upset when it um when it didn't um, live up to the expectation. Now, for me, I have a, a very good, like, mid-tier, very, like, you know, you know, mid-tier PC that, would, that that can run it. So I didn't really see any glitches. I only really had literally one glitch. Like, one glitch. But um, that's not the experience. That's not the consensus as far as the experience to be had. But, yeah, so I always look at the games like this, these big, ambitious, open games, and I kind of, I guess you could say, take it with a grain of salt because I know that it's probably not going to be fully up to par when it's first released. But we'll see with the day one patch or whatever they decide to patch once they, once we all get a, once they get feedback from these uh, content creators and people that they gave the game to early because I see everybody's throwing their review up now. The review embargo is lifted. It comes out tomorrow. But then once us common folk get to get our hands on the game and give our feedback, they'll... I'm sure they'll fix it. I'm sure they'll fix whatever's wrong with it. So, um, actually, what I want to do 
is check out if there's a Metacritic score for it already. It should be one of the um top games. Yep. Okay, so it's mixed reviews. So it's, this game is mid, saying most people to most people. Dang, this person gave it. These these people gave it a forty. Despite what is a promising combat formula as well as supporting systems behind it, when it comes to skills, crafting, upgrades, there are also several equally frustrating aspects of it that hold the game back. The hope is that Mumfish is able to fix some of the more glaring issues post-launch, but right now it feels like a welcome revolution. More than nuclear, more and more less. It feels less like a welcome revolution and more like a nuclear disaster. Wow, okay. Average review. Most small bring. A lot most people okay, so it's got it's got mostly positive reviews. A few mixed reviews and one negative review so far. Twelfth best PlayStation five game of twenty twenty three already. And the game's not even out yet. So this is just straight straight critics that got it early, like their reviews. So we'll see. I think the score will go up. It'll probably touch at eighty. 85 tops or they'll stay around this um mixed review area um we'll see though comes out tomorrow it's on game pass if you got game pass so definitely download that if you got game pass and try it out i'll definitely be uploading some gameplay footage once i get the other videos i've been working on up and uh we're gonna see we're gonna see um how it is so um let me know what y'all think in the comments so y'all already know the vibes like comment subscribe all that good stuff this your boy just falls and we out